Howdy. Why? You know, there was a golden age for breakfast cereals, and it was between the 80s and the 2000s. And during the early days, a lot of cereals fell into a special kind of breakfast menu. The you cannot possibly be considering eating that menu of breakfast, where we were mostly served sugary sugar bombs laced in chocolate sugar, with strange human-like characters on the box often egging us on to eat the cereal. There go. But which of these cereals failed the worst? Sometimes these cereals were just stupid ideas or passing fads. Or not even us 90s kids were willing to ingest them. So let's check out the 10 worst cereal failures. But for this video, I'd like to invite on a true expert of breakfast cereals. And here he is, the true cereal expert. What are you talking about, Strider? Since when am I an expert on cereal? Well, Critic, you recently covered cereal in your video, Top 10 Cereal Mascots. Dude, I made that like over 13 years ago, when there was like five cereals in the world. Oh. Oh. Oh, right. Uh, uh, wanna help out anyway? Hell yeah! Let's take a look at some weird-ass cereals! Yeah, on to the countdown. Fruity Marshmallow Krispies, lots of fruity marshmallow shit. What? Lots of fruity marshmallow shit. No. No way. Marshmallow shit. Well, at least they're honest about the quality of their product. That's the fruity marshmallow shit. Onto the countdown. Number 11. Huh? Why number 11? Because I like to go one step. Old gimmick I can't get away from now. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Banana Frosted Flakes. Personally, I've never been a big fan of Frosties, as the sugar coating never felt great on my teeth. But it's certainly got a few fans. What's up, critic? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Frosted Flakes have gotten more than a few fans here in the US. In 2017, Frosted Flakes was the second best-selling cereal, beaten only by Honey Nut Cheerios. Here in Australia, we call them Frosties. But the sad part is, this failure was the first time Frosties was trying to be a bit healthier. Banana Frosties actually felt more like a sports cereal. Rather than these Frosties just being a combination of sugar-coated corn, Banana Frosties had actual banana bits in them. And bananas are a fantastic sports snack. They're among my favorite snacks during a tough marathon. Sure, eating a whole banana would be way better, but at least they're introducing people to fruit in their breakfast. So why these healthy ish Frosties fail? Well, while my research couldn't find the exact reason, I could see one big issue right off the bat, and it shambled on the screen in this commercial. Goodness, my hero, Tony the Tiger. Jesus! Since when did Tony the Tiger turn into Five Nights at Freddy's? They're great. But while I'm sure this monstrosity didn't help matters, in general, consumers just didn't seem to be that interested in the idea of banana bits in their cereal. How'd it taste, anyway? Well, Marvo from Impulsive Buy tried them way back in the 80s, and he said they had a strong fruity flavor with crunchy banana chips. But honestly, I reckon it'd taste much better if they added in real banana. So if you want to try banana frosties for yourself, I recommend just getting a real banana and cutting it into your frosties. You can even just cut them up with your fingers. Bananas are the best. Oh, come on, Critic. What is it? Tell me. Strider, why are you holding a banana? You know, no one's ever bothered to ask me before. I don't know. I like bananas. They're the best. Yeah, yeah. Go to the next one. Number 10. Cupcake Pebbles. Ah, good old wholesome sweetened rice cereal with artificial flavor. That's literally what it says on the box. Barney has been stealing Fred's pebbles for longer than most of us have been alive. Barney, my pebbles! <laughs> They're out of this world. In fact, the duo's antics are so well known that they've even been parodied by some people. Like this guy here. You have a problem, Bon. You have a real serious problem. And it needs to be addressed. Heck, look at those big teeth and hideous sideburns. I like them, but in regards to the pebbles, it looks like Fred and Barney aren't even touching this one. It looks like only their kids Pebbles and Bam Bam are eating the cereal. My god, could it be? After all these years, Barney is finally over his cereal addiction? You're right, this might be a big breakthrough for him, because it looks like they're turning the Pebbles legacy over to their kids. Well, at least they were, because ironically, having Pebbles on the box didn't go down well in marketing. Really? They do know her name's on the box. 
Did people really not want to buy Pebbles when they actually showed Pebbles? It seems like a double standard. Yeah, I mean, it sounds silly, but it kind of makes sense. Nowadays, I think Pebbles cereal mostly appeals to nostalgic adults. The Flintstones cartoon really doesn't capture kids today like it did 50 years ago. They probably want to see the two main characters they grew up with on the box, Fred and Barney. I think you might be right. While cartoons like Tom and Jerry have stayed timeless and appeal to kids even today, Flintstones had a harder time transitioning through the generations. Well, it looks like a very sweet version of the cereal. How's it taste? Well, despite the sickeningly sweet box art, it apparently tasted okay. If still very, very sweet, like it's 40% sugar which is always good. Mr. Breakfast said it tasted remarkably similar to vanilla cupcake. He defined the taste as yellow frosted vanilla batter cupcake. However, despite Cupcake Pebbles failing, this company was determined to shove a cake into their new Pebbles spin-off. And in 2021, to mark Pebbles' 50th anniversary, they came back with birthday cake Pebbles. This time with Fred and Barney returning to their roles on the box. And so far, it seems to have been much better received than Cupcake Pebbles. Personally though, I'd feel the need to run 21 kilometers just from eating half a bowl of this stuff. So I'd probably skip it. I think I'll stick with my favorite, Weetabix. New Pulse Cupcake Pebbles, part of a good breakfast. Party in the box. And for number nine, Sour Patch Kids Cereal. As we'll discover with many of these, there was no official announcement that this cereal was discontinued at all. It just disappeared suddenly off the face of the earth. But as of this video anyway, I could not find any website on the internet where Sour Patch Kids Cereal was not indefinitely out of stock. Even on Amazon it was unavailable. That website has about everything. In fact, even back in 2019 when it only just came out, a YouTuber called Pooty had to look really hard to find any Sour Patch Kids cereal in shops. I was trying to find it, you don't know the got it. But why were these rainbow diabetes pellets discontinued? Well, in all the reviews of the cereal, there was one thing I consistently noticed, and that was it was considered a novelty cereal. The kind of cereal that might get social media attention for a month, but no one wants to eat it on a regular basis. Possibly because they want to live past 40. Have you seen the sugar in this thing? Yeah, it's about 40% straight sugar. And the comments from BuzzFeed taste testers echoed a similar sentiment. It tastes like straight candy when you just eat it. I think when someone gets up at six in the morning and is already trying to avoid feeling queasy, this bright box of sugar-colored calorie drops is probably the last thing they want to eat. Sure, it might appeal to kids, but how many American parents would honestly want to buy their kid a breakfast based on a sugar-covered candy? Regardless, who wants to turn their milk sour anyway? That's what happens when milk goes bad, doesn't it? It goes sour and gross? I agree, and Gabe from Cereal Time seemed to think so too. Who wants to drink a bowl of sweet and sour milk? Ugh, yeah, no good. So, do they actually taste like Sour Patch Kids? Well, amazingly, many taste testers said they did. Cereal Time said the taste was very similar to Sour Patch Kids, except crunchy. He described it as similar in taste to Trick Cereal, but with more of a sour punch. In fact, he said he could already smell the sourness just from pouring a bowl. Overall, most taste testers seemed to either hate it or just think it was meh. So I guess a Sour Patch Cereal was destined to be nothing more than a novelty fad. And for number eight, the Spongebob Cereal. Ah, oh, Spongy! Yeah, okay, I get the feeling this is more your department, not as much mine. Nothing against Spongebob, I'm just no expert. I haven't really covered it much on my own channel. Well, that's okay, because I know Spongy like the back of my hand. We're at the bottom of a well, but man, won't it be swell? Again, there's no exact reason for Spongebob cereal being discontinued, but so far, it's gone off the market three times. Once again, I thoroughly checked online and couldn't find any trace of this cereal anywhere. I even checked with my community on Discord and we couldn't find it on shelves in Canada, England, or Australia. Hey Critic, have you seen this on shelves in America? Spongebob cereal? I think we had it on the shelves in 2004. But that was a long time ago. I personally haven't seen any traces of it in recent years. 
Well, then it's probably discontinued in USA as well. It puzzled me though. I was like, how could this disappear? To me anyway, it actually looks pretty tasty. Apparently, my hearties, it was vanilla flavored cereal with nautical marshmallows. They came in SpongeBob, Patrick, and Pineapple. And these are what the marshmallows look like. You got SpongeBob, the Pineapple, and Patrick. I'm sure it's very unhealthy and I'd only eat it as a novelty, but boy, I want to try it. I just couldn't believe this one would fail. Not only that, but it would be discontinued three times from 2004, 2014, and 2020, whenever a new SpongeBob movie was released. They just couldn't seem to keep it on shelves, but why? The SpongeBob cereal got relatively good reviews, and it has one of the most popular cartoons of all time on the box. But they can only seem to stay afloat for a short time during the movie's releases. As always though, Spongy got me researching, and I discovered something that shocked me. Cereal is actually a dying industry. Vox recently reported that cereal sales have dipped significantly in the last 15 years. While many baby boomers like cereal, it's not always the first choice of breakfast for the newer generations. And that makes sense given some of the things I've heard people say while I was researching this list. No, milk creeps me out sometimes. It's, it's like a kid's cereal. Would I eat this yet? I don't eat cereal in general. Though there has been a resurgence post-2020 as many people have understandably craved nostalgia and simpler times. And I definitely get that. Did you find anyone that tasted this stuff? There weren't many, but yeah. Stefan tried the 2020 cereal over on his channel. He said they were like frosted Lucky Charms. Vanilla oat pieces, of, they're actually frosted. I think they'd all taste about the same, because all three versions were made with basically the same ingredients. Mr. Acrizzy tried it too, and he also reported they tasted very similar to Lucky Charms. Like I said, it, it does taste good. Just, just like Lucky Charms. But honestly, both Stefan and Mr. Acrizzy reported liking the taste. Unlike, say, Sour Patch Kids cereal, it didn't sound like the sweetness overpowered the palate, and the vanilla flavor blended well with the milk. I'm a big Spongy fan, so personally, I would have loved to try these cereals. My personal breakfast remains Wheat Bix or Wheater Bix with brown sugar and applesauce, but I still would have liked to try this one as a treat. Number seven. Nerd cereal. You gotta be kidding me, there's a nerd cereal? Oh, it was a thing, all right. Jeebus, I thought cupcake pebbles were just a bowl of sugar. I swear, at this point, it's not like they're even trying to pretend it's real food. It's basically just a bigger box of the candy, divided into two flavors, much like the original candy nerds. But we certainly didn't get to see this one stay on shelves for long. And nowadays, even the original Nerds candy is struggling to stay afloat. Nerds popularity has waned over the years, and nowadays you can only buy them in a select few flavors. Here in Australia, we can only buy them in specialty stores, mostly online. Not that I originally ate them much, but you get my point. And the cereal got a wide berth from consumers too. And really, who can blame them? Even as a kid, I'd much rather the idea of Cocoa Puffs say to a super sweet bowl of nerd cereal any day. Nerd candy and cereal, it, it just sounds kind of gross. Also, does anyone else think maybe it's a bad idea to have a pink or red cereal? Because it might turn your milk red and give the impression of, I don't know, blood? Well, maybe it would have taken off during the Twilight craze. Oh yeah, hmm. might have done well in the Twilight craze. Hmm. What's next? And for number six, Pop-Tarts Crunch. Ooh, the Pop-Tart. How could this incredible mass of refined flour and corn syrup not have a cereal? Well, we can only hope. Well, too bad, it does. Kellogg's goal was quite simple with the Pop-Tarts Crunch. Take a Pop-Tart, dice it into miniatures, put it in a box and market it to kids. Thus, we got a cereal made completely of miniature Pop-Tarts. It came in strawberry and brown sugar flavors. Though Kellogg's has actually had quite a few Pop-Tart snacks that simply never took off. But the Pop-Tarts crunch was definitely among their bigger failures. Why though? Well, their marketing certainly didn't help. Just check out this melodious masterpiece here. This is called Pop-Tarts Ode. I thought Pop-Tarts was really cool, but if you pour them in a bowl, they wouldn't fit. Tell Kellogg's made cereal called Pop-Tarts Crunch. They're crunchy, and you can pour milk on them. Pop-Tarts Crunch! 
Okay, I'm not a professional judge of musical talent, but maybe he could have had one lesson before the commercial? No offense to the guy, but I'd shell out money for his lesson if it meant never hearing that atonal ear assault ever again. But anyway, after barely one year, Pop-Tart's crunch was discontinued completely. If I were to speculate on the reason, though, I think half the appeal of Pop-Tarts is that they're hot and toasted. To me, anyway, cold Pop-Tarts drenched in milk just isn't an attractive concept. So why go cold and soggy Pop-Tarts crunch when they could instead have regular Pop-Tarts, hot and toasty? But despite the bad rap, Pop-Tarts crunch tried reappearing in 2019. It was exclusive to Walmart, and when I tried looking them up, once again, I had no luck finding any whatsoever. So I think the new version was discontinued as well. But honestly, with all the high fructose junk in these, I don't think losing them was a great loss to society. Or your dentist. Number 5. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Cereal Oh hell yeah! Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! The most 90s thing the 90s ever 90s! And it came out right around the time of the first movie. God, I love Yep, and as Serial Time pointed out, they even started packing collector cards into the box with scenes from the movie. So what kind of radical, awesome, cowabunga cereal is this? Um, actually, it's Czech cereal. Wait, what? It's just Czech cereal with some marshmallows. Oh, that's it? Yep, they call them Crunchy Ninja Nets. But it was basically just rice checks with turtles in the box. On the plus side though, uh, the Ninja Turtles marshmallows did leave the milk green, because, you know, back in the 90s, green milk was attractive to us. I think I can guess why this one was discontinued. All of us were obsessed with Ninja Turtles in the 90s, but their popularity waned by the 2000s. Precisely. And as you pointed out years back in nostalgic commercials, anything with TMNT on the front would sell. But even with a fantastic 2012 version of the show, these turtles just don't bring in the merchandise like they once did. Seriously, I wish I grew up with this 2012 version, it's amazing. Ah well, at the time, we loved it. Purely because they were Ninja Turtles. Number 4. Dunkin' Donuts Cereal Huh, Donut Coffee Flakes. According to sources, Dunkin' Coffee was infused into the cereal. When combined, this created Dunkin' Mocha, Caramel, and Macchiato cereal. The idea apparently came when coffee drinks boomed in popularity, and Dunkin' Donuts said, why don't we turn our coffee into a cereal? That's possible, right? The caffeine was kept relatively low though, 10 milligrams. you'd probably find more in your average bottle of cola. Duncan said this was so all can indulge in the rich, coffee-forward experience. It was basically just crunchy spheres and marshmallows with some coffee concentrate added. So how does a donut coffee flake taste? Well, Jamel tasted it, and he gave it a 3.5 out of 5 spoons. He called it a pretty decent bowl of refined grains and sugar. Which honestly isn't the most flattering description, but he did go on to say the coffee smell and taste was pretty strong. No caramel flavor at all, it really is more of a coffee flavored cereal. Which isn't bad. But he did strain to taste any caramel or mocha in each bite. He summarized it as coffee flavored Cocoa Puffs. They're like a coffee flavored Cocoa Puff. Doesn't sound so bad, why'd it disappear then? Well, I think it was the concept that put people off. I think some people thought mixing coffee and cereal together was a kind of gross concept. Yeah, not gonna lie, just hearing about a coffee cereal makes me want to brush my teeth. Yeah, and as of 2022, I couldn't find it for sale anywhere. Only the Dunkin' Donut cereal website seemed to be willing to sell me any. So I guess humankind will have to keep their cereal and their coffee separate. Unless, you know, like, you, you pour your coffee in your cereal. Though, personally, I don't think that's the greatest loss to society. Ah well, what's next? And for our third choice... Pac-Man cereal. Man, that 80s style of marketing was so memorable. Every kid dressed like they were entering the vacuum of space and their dances looked like seizures. But what were they advertising? Well, apparently back in the 80s, Pac-Man was popular enough that he warranted being turned into a cereal. So we basically got crunchy sweetened corn puffs and marshmallows shaped like Pac-Man. Plus, of course, all the shapes of his ghostly pursuers. The Pac-Man cereal was heavily marketed. They even had animated commercials at the time. Morning, kids! It's a Pac-Man day! With my crispy corn cereal coming your way! It's Pac-Man! 
cake with marshmallows. I swear every one of these cereals had marshmallows in them. I just never got the appeal of marshmallows for breakfast. But apparently, back in the day, the Pac-Man cereal was on shelves for at least a year. Apparently, we even got the Miss Pac-Man cereal spin-off. There are even fun prize giveaways on the box. Like the Pac-Man cereal came with an offer for a game and watch. But by 1985, reports say the cereal was discontinued. Well, it's not that surprising. The Pac-Man craze was big in the 80s, but it was exactly that, a craze. And crazes are often short-lived. Yeah, but I do like to think a good cereal can stand on not just brand recognition, but taste and nutrition. But I'm probably dreaming a bit too big when I want a Pac-Man cereal to have anything beyond brand recognition. Unfortunately, this one's been gone for nearly 40 years now, so taste tests are limited. But amazingly, Gabe from Cereal Time has some, and I'm starting to suspect this guy has a time machine. So what do you say about the taste? He claimed that they tasted good, but funnily enough, when you keep a cereal box in storage for 40 years, the cereal starts to shrivel up a bit. And that's exactly what happened here. And there are two of the ghost marshmallows. You can see they're really shriveled up and you can barely make out what color they were. But he claimed that back in the day, this was his absolute favorite tasting video game cereal. And that's actually pretty high praise. The reviews from Mr. Breakfast weren't bad either. He said it tasted like an extra sugary version of Kix with marshmallows added. Pac-Man's a pretty old game, so I can't see this cereal ever making a comeback, but with that being said, the internet has surprised me before, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, who knows what'll happen in the future. Number two. You know, there have been some silly cereals over the years, but few felt more silly than the Nintendo cereal system. Why is it called Nintendo Cereal System? What do these funny-shaped styrofoam pieces have to do with anything, Nintendo? Nintendo, now you're playing with power. Portable power. Apparently the cereal was made by Ralston, the same company that made the Ninja Turtles cereal. And you can see all the innovation of that cereal in this one which isn't much beyond the colourful box, honestly. Hey Critic, I remember back in the day, you mentioned in nostalgic commercials you tried these ones. What'd you think of them? Honestly, it was so long ago, I don't remember the taste that well. I mostly remember how annoying it was just to try and pour the cereal. I wonder if that frustration was part of what dropped sales. If you have a cereal that notoriously causes messes in households, that's not a great reputation. And at the end of 1991, well, this cereal poured its last bowl. On top of this Nintendo cereal, there was also Donkey Kong cereal. I mean, at one point, they even released Donkey Kong Jr. cereal, because apparently that was something we needed. In the bag, we got Mario, and apparently that is meant to be Bowser, and this thing is meant to be shaped like a Goomba. I sadly can't remember the taste too much. What do other people say? Well, luckily, we have brave taste testers like John Riggs. But since he's opening a box of 1988 cereal, he, he's probably not going to get the most accurate taste of flavor. Because, you know, he is eating a 34-year-old box of cereal. <coughs> he's a brave man. We wish him luck. Apparently, the original bags with Mario and Zelda were meant to taste fruity and berry-flavored. But he mostly said it tasted like dehydrated cat food. Yes, it's dehydrated. Yes, it's stale. Has that kind of dried cat food flavor to it. Which, to be fair, might be the original flavor they were going for. Dehydrated cat food. Maybe in 1988 it tasted like cat food. In amongst his coughing and spluttering from bravely attempting to eat it, he said it had a blast and aftershock that seeped into his soul. And is not a flavor found in nature. I'm not sure what it is. If I can describe it at all, it tasted like... <laughs> well, uh, that's always a good response. Even in 1989, he said it tasted terrible then as well. It sounds like a lot of kids bought it once, then realized it tasted bad and didn't buy it again. And yeah, the stupid packaging didn't help. Yeah, this definitely seems like a case of kids loving it, in spite of the taste. We bought it because we were big Zelda and Mario fans. But if you want a cereal to last, well, you gotta make it taste good as well. And for number one... Nickelodeon Green Slime. Jeebus, at some point this actually existed. They thought people or someone would want to eat the flakes of this green snot stuff. Where do I even begin with this thing? For starters, how to become a thing in the first place? 
Well, apparently this started with General Mills, the company behind Cocoa Puffs, Cheerios, Trix, and many others. They apparently partnered with Nickelodeon for 2003 Kids' Choice Awards to create green slime cereal. Slime colored and shaped corn puffs. The crazy part is I'm feeling slightly nauseous just explaining this to you. But slime has been all the rage on Nickelodeon ever since 1979, when it began on You Can't Do That on Television. Back then, they discovered the sliming of kids was a big hit. Apparently many kids at home watching were jealous of kids on the show. But apparently when they saw these kids slimed, well, it made them feel a little bit better about not being on the show. Good to know slime started with good old schadenfreude. Do we even need to ask why this was discontinued? You're eating green slime for breakfast! I know! I mean, how many mucus-colored cereals that look like the insides of someone's nose can you actually think of? You don't see that many green cereals down the aisle. Now, maybe I'm mistaken, but it's hard to imagine anyone above the age of nine actually wanting to touch this stuff, yet alone a parent wanting to buy it for them. Eating crunchy green-colored slime blobs, ugh. And the taste? I'm just assuming this is one of the worst tasting cereals ever. Again, it's green slime! Well, shockingly, some kids actually reported that it tasted pretty good. What? Despite being shaped and colored like the contents of someone's handkerchief, apparently the green corn puffs mixed with the orange Nickelodeon marshmallows gave a balanced, sweet, fruity flavor. Many kids also liked the fact that it turned their tongues green. But let's try and get an adult's reaction. How about someone who grew up with a product? So I guess I'll give it a try. Once again, we can count on the mysterious time machine of Gabe from Serial Time, who bravely went back in time to try these for himself. And I think his facial expression speaks for itself. His face looks like he's about to vomit. So I'm gonna go out on a limb and say these probably didn't taste good. I mean, ironically, the original green slime probably tasted a lot better than this. As Nickelodeon's green slime is simply a mix of vanilla pudding, applesauce, green food coloring, and a little oatmeal. So it's completely harmless and actually sounds like a pretty tasty combination. Though probably a little less pleasant when it's dumped all over your face. But in my opinion, green slime was the worst idea for a cereal ever. And I can't see it ever making a comeback. Let's hope the internet doesn't prove me wrong. And with that, thank you for joining me on this journey through the bizarre and silly of breakfast cereals. And thank you to Gabe from Cereal Time, whose video reviews gave me a better understanding of these cereals, their history and how they tasted, as well as the website Mr. Breakfast. And thank you, Critic. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for making these videos more fun. Glad to help, Strider. I'm the Nostalgia Critic guy, remember? So you don't have to. It's another gimmick from the 2010s, I kind of stuck with it. It's, I think it's cute. And to you, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>